Furrier. Welcome to this special CUBE conversation here in Palo Alto, California. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We have a conversation around AI for the enterprise, what this means. We've got two great guests, John Finelli, Vice President, Virtual GPU at NVIDIA, and Maurizio Davini, CTO, University of Pisa in Italy, uh, practitioner, customer, partner, um, got VMworld coming up, a lot of action happening in the enterprise. John, great to see you. Maurizio, nice to meet you remotely coming in from Italy for this remote conference. Hey John, thanks for having hey. us on again. Yeah. Nice uh, to meet you. I wish we could be in person uh, face to face, but that's coming soon, hopefully. John, you were talking, we were just talking before we came on camera about uh, AI for the enterprise. And the last time I saw you in person was in CUBE interview, we were talking about some of the work you guys were doing in AI. It's gotten so much stronger and, and broader in the execution of NVIDIA and the success you're having. Set the table for us. What is the AI for the enterprise conversation frame? Sure, so um, we, uh, we've been working with enterprises today on how they can d deliver AI or explore AI or get involved in AI um, uh, in a standard way, uh, in the way that they're used to managing and operating their data center, um, running on top of you know their Dell servers with uh, VMware vSphere. Um, so that uh, AI feels like a, a standard workload that a, an IT organization can uh, deliver to their engineers and data scientists. And then the flip side of that, of course, is ensuring that engineers and data scientists get the workloads uh, positioned to them or have access to them in the way that they need them. So it's no longer uh, you know, a trouble ticket that you have to submit to IT and, and you know, count the hours or days or weeks until you, you can get you know, new hardware. Right, by being able to pull it into the mainstream data center, IT can uh, enable self-service provisioning for those folks. So we actually, uh, we make AI more consumable or, or uh, easier to manage for IT administrators. And then for the engineers and the, the data scientists, et cetera, um, we make it easy for them to, to get access to those resources so they can get to their work right away. Quite uh, progress in the past two years. Congratulations on that. And looking, it's only the beginning, it's day one. Mercy, I want to ask you uh, about what's going on as the CTO of University of Pisa, what's happening down there. Tell us a little bit about what's going on. You have the center of excellence there. What does that mean? What does that include? Uh, you know, uh, University of Pisa is one of the, one of the biggest uh, and oldest uh, in Italy. Uh, if you have to give you some numbers, it's around uh, 50K students and 3,000 staff between uh, professors, researchers, and administrative staff. Uh, so I, uh, uh, we are looking into daily operation of the data centers and especially supports for scientific computing. And uh, this is our, our daily work, let's say, uh, this uh, taking us a lot of times, but you know, uh, we are able to uh, reserve a percent percentage of, of our time uh, for R&D. And this is uh, where the center of excellence uh, is, uh, is coming out. Uh, so we are always looking uh, into uh, new kind of technologies that we can put together to build new solutions, to do next generation computing, as uh, we always say. We are looking for the right partners to do things together. And uh, at the end of the day is a work that is good for us, is good for our partners, and typically uh, uh, ends in uh, uh, a production uh, system for our university. So it's the evolution of the scientific computing environment that we have. Yeah, and you guys have a great track record and reputation of you know, R&D, testing, software, hardware combinations and sharing those best practices. You know, with COVID impacting the world, certainly we see it on the supply chain side. Uh, and John, we heard Jensen, your CEO at NVIDIA talk uh, multiple keynotes now about software. Uh, NVIDIA being a software company. Uh, Dell, you mentioned Dell and VMware. You know, COVID has brought this virtualization world back and now hybrid. Those are words that we used basically in the tech industry. Now it's, you're hearing hybrid and virtualization kicked around in real world. So it's ironic that, you know, VMware and Dell uh, and theCUBE and eventually all of us together are doing more virtual stuff. So with COVID impacting the world, how has that changed you guys? Because software is more important you got to leverage the hardware you got, whether it's Dell or in the cloud. This is a huge change. 
Yeah, so uh, as you mentioned, uh, organizations and enterprises, you know, they're looking at things differently now. Um, you know, the idea of uh, hybrid, you know, when you talk to tech folks and we think about hybrid, we always think about, you know, how the different technology works. Um, what we're hearing from customers is hybrid, uh, you know, effectively translates into, you know, two days in the office, three days remote, you know, in the future when they actually start going back to the office. So hybrid work is actually driving uh, the need for hybrid IT or, 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 or the ability to share resources more effectively um, and to think about having resources uh, wherever you are, whether you're working from home or you're in the office that day, you need to have access to the same resources. And that's where you know the, the ability to virtualize those resources and provide that access um, makes that hybrid part seamless. Mauricio, what's your world has really changed. You have students and faculty, you know, things used to be easy in the old days, physical and this network, that network, now virtual's there. You must really be having a heavy impact. Uh, yeah, we have, a, we have, of course, as you can imagine, a big impact uh, in any kind of the IT offering uh, from uh, uh, design new networking technologies, deploying new networking technologies, uh, uh, new kind of operation. Uh, we find, uh, we found that uh, in, uh, we were not able anymore to do uh, bare metal operations directly. But uh, uh, from the IT point of view, uh, we were, uh, uh, how can I say, prepared in the sense that uh, uh, we run from uh, three or four years uh, a parallel uh, environment. We have bare metal and virtual. So, as you can imagine, traditional bare metal, HPC cluster, uh, DG, DGX machines, uh, multi-GPUs, and so on. Uh, but in parallel, we have developed uh, a virtual environment that at the beginning was, as you can imagine, used uh, for uh, traditional enterprise application or VDI. Uh, we have a significant, significant horizon uh, farm with uh, uh, grid for, uh, remote desktop, uh, remote workstation that we are using for, uh, for example, um, developing uh, virtual classroom uh, or virtual workstations. And so on. this is was typical, the typical operation that we did in the virtual world. But in the same infrastructure, we were able to develop first HPC in the virtual world. So virtualization of the HPC resources uh, for our researchers and uh, at the end, uh, AI, uh, AI offering and uh, AI uh, software uh, for our uh, for our researcher. You can imagine uh, our virtual infrastructure as a sort of whiteboard, where we are able to design new solution uh, in a fast way, uh, without losing. Uh, too much performance, and in the case of the AI, we will see that we the performance are almost the same as the bare metal, and but with all the flexibility that we needed in the COVID nineteen world and in the future world too. So a couple of things there, I want to get John's thoughts as well. Performance, you mentioned, you mentioned hybrid, virtual. How does VMware and NVIDIA fit into all this? I'm, as, as you put this together, okay, because you, you bring up performance, that's now table stakes. You're seeing scale and performance are, are really are on the table. Everyone's looking at it. Mm -hmm. How does VMware and NVIDIA, John, fit in with the university's work? Sure, so um, I think you're right. When it comes to uh, you know enterprises or, or, or mainstream enterprises, you know, beginning their initial foray into, into AI, um, there, of course, is performance and scale and, and also kind of ease of use and familiarity are all kind of things that come into play in terms of when an enterprise starts to think about it. And, um, uh, you know, we have a history with VMware of working on this technology. So in 2019, we introduced our virtual compute server uh, with VMware, which allowed us to effectively virtualize the CUDA compute driver. Um, at last year's VMworld in 2020, um, the CEOs of both companies got together and made an announcement that we were going to bring AI, uh, our entire NVIDIA AI platform to the enterprise on top of vSphere. And we did that um, starting in March this year. Uh, we we, we uh, finalized that with the introduction of VMware's vSphere 7 Update 2 
and the early access at the time of NVIDIA AI Enterprise. And um, we have now gone to production with both of those products. And so, you know, customers um, like uh, the University of Pisa are now using our production capabilities. And um, whenever you virtualize, in particular in, in, in something like AI where performance is, is really important, um, the first question that comes up is, uh, uh, does it work and and how quickly does it work or or you know from a, you know, an IT audience a lot of times you get the um, how much did it slow down and 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 so we we've worked really closely from an Nvidia software perspective and a VMware perspective and we really talk about Nvidia AI enterprise with vSphere 7 as optimized certified and supported and the net of that is um, we've been able to um, run the standard industry uh, benchmarks for single node, as well as multi-node performance with about maybe potentially a 2% degradation in performance, depending on the workload, of course, it's, it's very different, um, but, but effectively being able to trade that, that performance for the accessibility, the ease of use, um, and even you know, using things like vRealize automation for self-service for the data scientists. Um, and uh, so that's kind of how we've been pulling it together for the market. Great stuff. Well, I got to ask you, I mean, people have that reaction of, about the performance. I think you're being polite um, around how you said that. Shows the expectation. It's kind of skeptical. Uh, and so I got to ask you, the impact of this is pretty significant. Um, what is it now that customers can do that they couldn't or couldn't feel they had before? Because if the expectation was, well, does it work well? I mean, does it go fast? Means it works, but like performance is always a concern. What's different now? What's, it, what, what's the bottom line? impact on what customers yeah, I think, do now that they couldn't do before. Yeah, so, so the bottom line impact is that AI is now accessible for the enterprise across their, I'll call their mainstream data center. You know, enterprises typically, you know, use consistent building blocks like, you know, the, the Dell uh, VxRail products, right? Where they have two use servers that are common and standard across the data center. And um, now uh, with NVIDIA AI Enterprise and VMware vSphere, they're able to manage their AI in the same way that they're used to managing their data center today. So there, there's no retraining, there's no um, separate clusters, there, there isn't like a, a shadow IT. So this really allows an enterprise to efficiently deploy um, and cost effectively deploy it, uh, it without, because there's no performance degradation, without compromising what their, uh, their, their data scientists and their researchers are looking for. And then the flip side is for the data science and researcher, um, using some of the self-service automation that I spoke about earlier, they're able to uh, get a virtual machine today that maybe has a half a GPU. Um, as their models grow, they do more exploring. Uh, they might get a full GPU or, or two GPUs in a virtual machine and their environment doesn't change because it's all connected to the backend and storage. And so for the, for the, the developer and the researcher, um, it, it, it makes it seamless. So it's really kind of a, a win for both IT and for the user. And, and um, again, University of Pisa uh, is doing some amazing things um, in terms of the workloads that they're doing um, and, and, uh, and, uh, and are validating that performance. Maurizio, share, weigh in on this, share your opinion on, or your reaction to that, what you can do now that you couldn't do before. Could you share your experience? Well, our experience is, uh, uh, of course, if you, if you go to your, uh, uh, data scientists or researchers, uh, the idea of uh, sacrificing performance to flexibility at the beginning uh, is not so well accepted. It's okay for, uh, for the IT management. As John was saying, uh, you have people that is know how to deal with the virtual infrastructure. So nothing changed for them. But at the end of the day, uh, we were able to uh, uh, test with our data scientists and researchers that the, the performance was almost similar around really 95% of the performance for the internal developer, the developer who are, um, workloads. So we are not dealing with benchmarks. We have some uh, workloads that are internally developed and apply to healthcare, music generator, or some other strange 
project that we have inside. And we were able to show that the performance on the virtual and bare metal world were almost the same. We the addition that in the virtual world, uh, you are much more flexible. You are able to pre-configure uh, everything uh, very fast. You are able to design solution for your researcher uh, in a more flexible way and effective way. We, are, we were able to use the latest uh, technologies from Dell Technologies, NVIDIA. Uh, you can imagine uh, from the latest Power Edge, the latest cards from NVIDIA, uh, the latest network cards uh, from NVIDIA, like the Bluefield 2, the, the latest uh, uh, switches to set up an infrastructure that at the end of the day is uh, our winning platform for our data science. Great, it's a great collaboration. Uh, congratulations, it's exciting. Um, get the latest and greatest and, and, and get those, the, the, the new benchmarks out there, new, new, new playbooks, new best practices. I do have to ask you, Maurizio, if you don't mind me asking, why look at virtualizing AI workloads? What's the motivation? Why did you look at virtualizing AI workloads? Oh, oh for the sake of flexibility, because you know, uh, in the latest couple of years, uh, the uh, AI resources are never enough. So we are, uh, if you go after the bare metal uh, in installation, you are uh, going into uh, a world that is developing very fastly. But of course, you, you can afford all the bare metal uh, infrastructure that your data scientists are asking for. So uh, we decided to integrate uh, our virtual infrastructure with uh, AI uh, resources in order to be able to uh, use in different ways in a more flexible way. Uh, of course, uh, we, we, have a, we have a two parallel world. We still have a bare metal infrastructure. Uh, we are growing the, first, the bare metal infrastructure, but at the same time, we are growing our um, virtual infrastructure because it's flexible, because we because our our uh, staff people are are happy about uh, how the, 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 the platform behaves and they know how to build them. So they don't have to, to learn anything new. So it's a sort of comfort zone for everybody. I mean, no one ever got hurt virtualizing things. It makes, it makes things go better, faster, building on, on that workloads. John, I got to ask you, you're on the NVIDIA side. You, you see this real up close with NVIDIA. Why do people look at virtualizing AI workloads? Is the unification benefit? I mean, AI implies a lot of things. It implies you have access to data. It implies that silos don't exist. I mean, that doesn't, I mean, that's hard. I mean, is this real? Are people yeah. actually looking at this? How's it working? Uh, yeah, so so again, um, you know, for all the benefits and, and activity that AI brings, um, AI can be pretty complex, right? It's complex software to, to set up and to manage. And um, with NVIDIA AI Enterprise, we're really focusing in on ensuring that it's easier for organizations to use. You know, for example, um, you know, I'd mentioned, you know, we, we had introduced a virtual compute server or VCS, um, uh, two years ago, and and that that has seen some some really interesting adoption, some uh, enterprise use cases. But what we found is that at the driver level, um, it still wasn't accessible for the majority of enterprises. And so what we've done is we've built upon that with NVIDIA AI Enterprise, and we're bringing in pre-built containers that remove some of the complexity. As you know, AI has a lot of open source components, and trying to ensure that all the open source dependencies are resolved. So you can get the AI developers and, and researchers and data scientists actually doing their work can be complex. And so what we've done is we, we brought these pre-built containers that allow you to do everything from uh, your initial data preparation, data science using things like NVIDIA Rapids, um, to do your training uh, using PyTorch and TensorFlow, um, to optimize those models using TensorRT, and then to deploy them um, using what we call NVIDIA Triton server, right? Which is our inferencing server. So really helping that AI loop um, become accessible and that AI workflow uh, as something that an enterprise um, can manage as part of their common core infrastructure. Yeah, I mean, having the performance and the tools 
available. It's just a huge godsend. People love that. Mm -hmm. It makes them more productive. And again, scales up existing stuff. Okay, great stuff, great insight. I have to ask, what's next with this collaboration? Um, this is one of those better together situations. Mm -hmm. uh, it's working. Um, Maurizio, what's next uh, for your collaboration uh, with Dell VMware NVIDIA? Uh, we will not, we, for sure, we will not stop here. Uh, we are just uh, starting working on new things, looking for new development, uh, looking for the next beast to come. Uh, you know, the virtual world is something that is moving very fast, <coughs> and uh, and we are we, we will not we will not stop here because because the um, the outcome of this world. Uh, has been uh, very big for uh, for our research group, uh, and and what John was saying, uh, this the fact that now all the software stack uh, for AI are simplified is something that has been uh, accepted very well. O of course, you can imagine researching is uh, developing new things, but for people that needs uh, uh, integrated workflow. The work that NVIDIA has done in the development of software package, in uh, developing containers that gives the uh, end user uh, the capabilities of running their workloads uh, is, uh, is really something that is, some years ago was unbelievable. Now everything is really, is really easy to manage. John mentioned open source, yeah. obviously a big part of this. What's, are you going to, quick, quick follow up if you don't mind, are you going to share your results so people can, can look at this so they can have an easier path to AI? Oh yes, of course. Uh, all the, all the, uh, the work, the, the work that is done at, at IT level, from University of Pisa uh, is here to be shared. So we, we uh, as, uh, as much as we have time to write down, we are we are trying to find the way to share the results of the work that we are doing with our partner Dell and Nvidia. So, for sure, will be shared. All right, we'll we'll, we'll get that link into the comments. John, your thoughts, final thoughts on the on the on the collaboration uh, with the University of Pisa and Dell VMware and Nvidia. Where does this all go next? Sure. So, uh, so with the University of Pisa, we're you know we're we're absolutely uh, you know grateful to Mauricio and his team for the work they're doing and, and the feedback they're sharing with us. Um, we're learning a lot from them uh, in terms of things we could do better and things we can add to the product. So that's a fantastic collaboration. Um, I believe that Mauricio has a session at VMworld. So uh, if you want to actually learn about some of the workloads, um, you know they're doing like music generation, they're doing you know COVID nineteen research, um, they're doing deep multi level. Uh, 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 deep learning training. Um, so there's some really interesting work there. And so we want to continue that partnership with the University of Pisa, um, uh, again, across all four of us, uh, uh, University, NVIDIA, uh, Dell and VMware. And then on the tech side, you know, for our enterprise customers, um, you know, one of the things that we actually didn't speak much about was, um, I mentioned that the, the product is, is optimized, certified and supported. And I think that support cannot be uh, understated, right? So as enterprises start to move into these new areas, uh, they want to know they can pick up the phone and call uh, NVIDIA or VMware or Dell, and they're going to get support for these new workloads um, as they're running them. Um, we we are also continuing, uh, you know, to to think about. We spent a lot of time today um, on like the developer side of things and, and and developing AI. But the flip side of that, of course, is that um, when those AI apps are available or AI enhanced apps, right? Pretty much every enterprise app today is adding AI capabilities, all of our, our partners in the, in the enterprise software space. And so you can think of NVIDIA AI Enterprise as having a runtime component. So that as you deploy your applications into the data center, they're going to be uh, automatically take advantage of the GPUs that you have there. And so we, we're seeing this uh, future as you're talking about the collaboration going forward where um, uh, the, the standard data center building block still maintains and is, is going to be something like a, a VxRail uh, to you server. But instead of just being C, uh, CPU storage and RAM, they're all going to go with CPU, GPU storage and RAM. And that's going to be the norm. And every app enterprise application is going to be infused with AI and be able to take advantage of GPUs in that scenario. Great stuff, AI for the enterprise. This is a great CUBE conversation. Just the beginning, we'll be having more of these. Virtualizing AI workloads is real. It impacts data scientists, impacts the compute, the edge, all aspects of the new 
environment we're all living in. Uh, John, great to see you. Maurizio, Same nice here, to meet you uh, in, all the way in Italy. Looking forward to meeting in person. And good luck on your session. I just got a note here on the session. It's uh, at VMworld. Uh, it's session 2263, I believe. Um, and so if anyone's watching, want to check that out. Um, love to hear more. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Thanks, John, for having us. Thanks, okay. Maurizio. It's a CUBE conversation. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.